Uh, good morning and welcome to the meeting of climate change and nature security uh, scrutiny. Um, item one, apologies. And we received apologies from Councillor David Hopkins, Chair. Thank you. Uh, disclosures, any? No? No. Um, prohibition of whipped votes and declaration of party whips. Any comments? No. OK, moving on. Item four, minutes of previous meeting. Minutes of meeting 28th of November and letter to cabinet member 28th of November 2023 meeting. Um, right, should we go through the minutes? Have you seen the minutes? Oh, yes. Uh, would you say they were? OK, right, pass. Are you all right with the minutes? Hi, Wendy. I keep looking up there, I can see it here. Um, Hi. Right, right. <coughs> minutes OK? Minutes passed? OK, great. Um, right. Um, I think I rushed that a bit. Are you all right that the minutes are OK? First page, second page? I think there's only two pages. Yep, OK, moving on. Uh, public question time. We haven't had any questions, have we? No, we haven't had any questions. Um, so let's get on to item six, public electric vehicle charging provision. Uh, who's leading this? Who's leading? You're all of us, right? OK. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Just I don't know if there's anybody else online who doesn't know, but uh, shall we do that? I think we're supposed to. Yeah, go on. <laughs> uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning to the committee or, or the panel, I should say. Uh, Councillor Andrew Lewis, um, Deputy Leader, but also Cabinet Member for Service Transformation, which includes uh, a passion, uh, I should say, and, and commitment to electric vehicles and the promotion of. Thanks, Chair. Uh, my name's Matt Bowyer. I'm the Group Manager for Network Infrastructure. Oh, my name is Owen Brannigan. I'm Transport Strategy Officer uh, at Swansea. And my name is Councillor Michael. Wendy? Sorry, yes, real problems I think you're at the moment. Yes, I keep losing. Anyway, I'm Councillor Wendy Fitzgerald, Pentagon Air Ward. Okay. <coughs> Chris, do. Hi, uh, Councillor Chris Adams, uh, Mills Ward. Well, Stuart? No, I think Stuart's having problems, so we'll we'll move on from the introductions. I think Ollie's there. Well, I'm, yep. uh, Stuart, sorry, Stuart Davis, Head of Highways and Transport. OK. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, Councillor Oliver James from uh, Carpet Ward, doing the joint act of joining the meeting, paying attention, but also looking after my daughter who has chicken pox. <laughs> so sad. Oh, next. oh, oh I hope she gets better soon. Oh, OK, right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, right, so uh, I think I say take it away now. Um, so, uh, Chair, uh, we're really grateful to the panel for submitting the questions in advance. I don't know if you want to go straight to questions or do you want me to do a little introduction of where we currently are? Yeah, so um, I know some uh, members and some councillors will know we've been on this journey for quite some time. Uh, in the beginning, it was, shall I say, uh, rather difficult because um, electric vehicles were very sparse. Not many people owned them. There wasn't a great deal of interest at that time. 
but that has changed and the scene is changing now. People are taking an interest in electric vehicles, I'm pleased to say, uh, and, uh, you know, enjoying the, the network that we've put in in terms of the publicly accessible charging infrastructure across Swansea. What we've done uh, in the, the first phases is to concentrate specifically on council car parks um, because when we own the land, it's much easier for us to regain control over what happens on that land uh, and use that as a tool to encourage people to take up EV vehicles. Um, we've also alongside that done some promotion with the public and we've done some regular surveys to see what the actual interest is. Um, and I'm pleased to say the, the recent phase that we've had, and I know I've got officers which will tell us a bit more about the recent phases, but we have got a city centre hub planned, which involves a solar canopy to charge that. And also we're reaching out now to further car parks, coastal car parks, and trying to broaden that infrastructure, not just for local residents, but also to give confidence to tourists when they, they visit the city. Um, and so we're doing everything we can within the limitations of the grants that we're applying for. Um, but it is an expensive piece of work. And particularly when we look at grid uh, connection, you can see sometimes grid connection can be as much as £30,000 just for the connection without the electric charging pillars on top of that. So it can be expensive. So what we do is we try and strategize and make our money go as far as we can. And we take into account the grid connection charges and try and limit those so we can install as many charging pillars as we possibly can. I don't know if officers today want to add to anything that I've said in terms of introduction. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you. I think um, I think um, Council's covered pretty much everything. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, we, we are sort of um, trying to improve the amount of the availability of EV infrastructure within within the county um, to encourage people to to transition to electric vehicles and then once there's sufficient market penetration then the hope the, the hope then is that the private sector will take over and and start installing their own charge points to further help the public Mike. We'll go to the questions we have here. Uh, Will, do you want to kick us off with the first one? Yeah, apologies. I couldn't introduce myself there. I think most people know me, but Will Thomas, <laughs> Mumbles, Mumbles Ward. Sorry, my internet was bad, so I had to join on my mobile. Um, I think uh, one of, when we had our sort of pre-meeting, one of the things that came up uh, from several people was, you know, when you're in other cities, uh, mainly commenting on international cities, you know, such as Paris and London, granted, and understand that all uh, not all counties have got the, the, the budget of those major cities. But um, on some of the lampposts, it, we see charging points on the highway, on lampposts, um, on the short term parking <coughs> and indeed resident parking. I'm just wondering if we've ever looked into to that and if we plan to trial it anywhere. Um, I mean, for me, it would make sense. Um, you know, to just do a couple of trials uh, with the long cables. So obviously you don't have the trip hazards as much. So uh, that's the uh, first question, please. Thanks. Thanks, Will. One, two, back to you. Yes, please. Thank you, Chair. And thank you to Councillor Thomas. I know Councillor Thomas is a particular advocate for electric vehicles, and we have had many discussions about mumbles uh, and charging infrastructure in mumbles. Um, the, the short answer to this is not at this current time, and there are reasons and rationale for that. Um, so, of course, when we talk about London areas, they've had significant grant funding, but there are other elements to the picture that uh, the reason why they have been able to do it and why we can't at this current time. So most of Swansea Council's lighting columns are fed from the council-owned private cable, which is not powered directly from the electricity board cable. Um, so this means the columns are only energised during the hours of darkness. So if somebody wanted to charge during the day, they wouldn't be able to do that using system connected to the lighting column. Also, um, there are concerns regarding uh, additional load. 
in terms of uh, the, the columns that we currently have. And a lot of our lighting columns don't have the capacity to be able to deal with that additional load. Um, again, in terms of the lighting stock, many of our lighting columns are located at the back of a footpath as opposed to on the curb. So we would still be dealing with trailing cables, which we know are a trip hazard and uh, opens us up to all types of liabilities, which uh, causes us difficulties. Um, the current unmetered supply agreements don't allow us to resell our energy either. Uh, and there is, of course, which I know has been well discussed in other forums, the difficulty with people feeling they own the space outside their property. So if it was a lighting column outside someone's home, they would expect to be able to park outside their home. So there are a number of challenges for us, but we will still keep a close eye and wherever possible, you know, if things do change, we will, of course, uh, try to implement that if we can. But as it stands currently, we're not able to, I'm afraid. Thank you. Um, will, do you want to come back? Yeah, um, I thought there'd be a, uh, yeah, thanks, Chair. I thought there'd be a, a good reason for it, but then it sounds like there is. Uh, I'm, is it 100% of the, the town centre's um, uh, lighting columns that are fed off the council? Thing? So there, there is, has a review been done to see if there is a, is worth a trial? Um, okay. But I suppose I suppose saying that then it, there's no point in rolling it out if it if it did work, is there? So yeah, okay. Thanks for the uh, answer. Okay. Cheers. Okay. It's, it's well over eighty percent of the lighting stock is is fed from a, a private cable. I mean, we are. I was going to say suffering. Suffering is probably the wrong word. We're, we're, it's the effect of us investing in our lighting stock over the last twenty years, um, whereas some cities like London, for example, haven't. Yeah. So they've still got the electricity board connections coming into the lighting columns because they haven't spent the money on improving their own cable network and now evs have become a thing and all of a sudden if it's like well alone we can we can feed things from lighting columns now because we've got a a, a board supply coming into it thank you yeah sorry chair could i just could i just follow up very quickly on that i uh, promise not to be quick so so if it's 80 percent, is is that 20 percent being identified as potential for this use or is it not in the city center or anywhere of use like terraces or whatever thanks well um it's 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 20 percent, but also factored into that 20 percent is the position of the columns which ones are at the front which ones are at the back um what's the actual capacity of the board cable coming in is that big enough it's it's still even without a small number of lighting columns it was a, it's a significant chunk of work to try and identify any any trial sites whereas we know that on the whole we're going to really struggle with this so our efforts are being directed towards what we can affect now which is um provision of public accessible charge points in in car parks and other bits of council so land. basically what you're saying is if we wanted any more street furniture that did this it would be something apart from that i think so yeah i think um we are looking we were having talking to transport for wales about undertaking some on-street residential trials which is like a, it's, it's a separate piece of um infrastructure it'd be a separate electricity Thank supply you. okay chris um you're up next your question So what what I'll do I'll, I'll just do two and three to yeah, together. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, that's Because uh, it's a bit easier. Um, so what what are we doing to engage the the private sector um, to to help us out and, and put their own infrastructure on? Um, I'm thinking about things like petrol stations for for fast charging, um, but also things like local supermarkets. So for example, Marks and Spencers and Mumbles or Co-op in in West Cross. Um, could use their car parks for people to slow charge overnight um, and they could actually make revenue for themselves that way. So is, is there any talks with the private sector to help us out? Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you, Chair. And thank you to Councillor Evans for the questions. Uh, a number of years ago, I wrote out actually to all the local supermarkets, the main chains who shall not be named for this meeting, uh, and sent a letter encouraging them to take up electric vehicle charging infrastructure on the basis that generally people who own electric vehicles, certainly at that time, had more disposable income and it would be good business sense for them to do that. The only ones that responded to me, um, I'm sad to say, were Sainsbury's. Um, the manager was very keen as an EV owner himself. 
um, but they didn't at that point decide to put infrastructure in. But I'm pleased to say a few years on, we are seeing some charging infrastructure in our supermarket car parks. It does make good sense to me that if somebody's there to do their weekly shop, then they can charge up while they're doing their weekly shop. So I think it's a no brainer really for supermarkets, but I'm happy to commit today to write out to them again to try and influence them. But of course, as a council, we have no control over what supermarkets do. And in terms of petrol stations, my understanding is that there is an action plan that they will install electric vehicles. Inevitably, they're going to have to adapt to the new climate in terms of people taking up EV. Um, but I'm not sure where they are in terms of the timing of that. But again, as a commercial sector, that is something which is outside the council's control. Thank you. I was just going to say Michael's experience of that recently was. Yes, because uh, I think it was two years ago I approached Shell and, the, and I asked Shell, uh, are you going to install EV charging points? And they came back with a reply in Sketty. Sketty is not sufficiently affluent. Well, that's what they actually said. <clears throat> the other thing is they are proposing to put EV charging points in the shower garage, in the halfway garage, uh, which is proposed in uh, Mumbles or was well, actually in Sketty, but it's on the borderline. Uh, but at the moment, that uh, planning application is actually is actually going nowhere because uh, they've applied for pre-planning and that has planning come back quite negative on that. And I, I can well understand why they come back negative. I'm not uh, arguing with that. So, so that at the moment isn't going anywhere. So th the main concern I have is that there's people in uh, areas of Sketty, Uplands, Mumbles, other parts of Swansea, who those people, they do not have drives and they haven't got the capability of, of charging their cars. And now this is a this is a real problem. Do you want to take that? Yeah, um, I mean, uh, Councillor Locke is uh, absolutely right to flag up that people without driveways do have uh, difficulty in terms of using their own electricity supply to charge their own vehicles. We understand that as a local authority. It is a challenge, but this is why we've decided to try and focus on the more urban shopping centres and districts as well. Um, for example, Calais, we're looking at putting charging infrastructure in the Calais shopping district. And with the council network, we're not necessarily looking to make a profit on the, the charging infrastructure. What we want to do is to try wherever we possibly can to keep it as affordable as possible to help bridge the gap for those people who can't put charge and infrastructure outside their properties. And can I just also say, it's pleasing to see that Halfway Garage are, are looking to install uh, electric vehicles. And we are hopeful that what we are doing will create a domino effect and that other people will follow suit. We, we're looking to sort of instigate and inspire organisations and, and uh, things like the hotels, for example, are taking up EVs now, which is really good to see. Uh, and so we hope that that private or commercial network will expand as well. Um, and we hope that we are doing that. We're stimulating that progress, I hope, as a local authority. Thank you. Yes, um, um, could I just, yes. just give a little. Uh, <clears throat> the, um, the problem with the halfway garage isn't, from what I understand from planning, isn't because of anything to do with that. They uh, shell are keen on installing some sort of uh, um, either a burger place or McDonald's, McDonald's type place so that people can drive through and pick up food and planning is not very keen on that idea because of the actual location and I can well understand that I'm not arguing with that point. The other thing is I'd just like to mention that there was a question a few months ago uh, concerning the earlier comments and um, I think the figure came out that the amount of council, uh, the amount of um, on on the council circuit for for the for for these lampos is actually eighty four percent. I think that was an answer to a, a an actual question from the Uplands councillors back in October last year. Clarity's sake, eighty four percent energy. Eighty four percent of the circuit is un, is is under control of the actual council. So so as has been said, 
it means we can only charge when the, when the lamp is on. Off, yeah. Okay. Which means it's a bit of a problem in the, in the summertime. Yes. Yeah, it is rather. Thank you. So, all right, the next question is mine. Um, has the council looked into using community buildings for installation of EV uh, charging points such as churches? I was thinking of one in Mumbles that has got plenty of parking around it and it might save people who haven't anywhere to put their EV. Um, but community centres as well, or any community building we could we could use. You kind of answered it. Yeah, the, the short answer is, is yes. Um, we do keep well we've just before christmas we ran a survey for for people ev owners to see where we could see the highest areas of of demand for this kind of thing and and it's not showing whilst it, it is ownership is increasing we, we're not seeing the clusters of demand that we'd need to justify putting these things in because obviously we we are in partnership with the commercial operator and whilst you know we're not looking to turn a profit out of this it needs to it needs to wash its own face um we will continue to run the surveys every year and then when we identify areas where we think, yeah, do you know what? This is this is a, a, a good fit for some charging infrastructure where it's going to be used and it's going to be a benefit to the public and there's and there's a demand for it. Then uh, and yeah, we'll seek to put would it. Would it be worth following on from that? Would it be worth getting? I know we we can't afford the moment, but grants so that they know that they could claim a grant to put it in and long term they could earn money from from having an EV parking. A lot of the issue with the grants available is that they require a significant element of match funding. So if a community organisation wants to apply to, to OZ for a, a grant for a, a charge point, then they're probably looking up to 50% match on that. So, so they, we need to find it's, it's just a chunk of money, especially when you're talking about very high supply costs. Yeah, that's can, a, lot money, a lot of money for, say, a church to find yeah. or whatever. OK, thank you. Mary, do you want to ask your question? Yes, thank you. Um, I don't know if there's something wrong with the camera in the Gloucester room, but we have a lovely view of the carpet when uh, the side that the cabinet member's sitting. The other side, we can see who it is. But uh, So I'm not sure who I'm speaking to or who's going to answer the question because we can't see the person. Um, mine, as you can see, is obviously about Calais, which the cabinet member has mentioned. And yes, we have flagged it up because we're going to be losing either two or three parking spaces. It was looked at to see if you could extend the parking bay where the um, build out has been put for safety reasons, obviously. And I don't think they can build into that. But we've been talking about private um funding, i.e. community centres, but there is a private car park in Calais which has bays that would be suitable. And the only reason we can't put them in there is because the Welsh Government apparently are funding either all of it or part of it and say it has to go on community uh, land. Now, in some areas, i.e. Mumbles or ourselves, why is it so, you know, why do they really have to put it on council land, which is going to cause a problem? We're not going to have enforcement officers up there watching people park, and it's going to cause a lot of um, animosity to people if they are parking in those bays when somebody might want to charge their, fo uh, their phone, <laughs> yeah, their vehicle. But also we're a, a destination to go at. and it's on the wrong side of the road if somebody's had a long journey and wants to um charge their vehicle, they're going to have to uh, go all the way down to the bottom, round the roundabout, back up, charge it, go round the roundabout down by Alpha and back down to Gower, which isn't really a, you know, a safe way of doing things. So I just wonder why we can't put pressure on the Welsh Government to try and uh, get them in other areas. OK, thank you, Mary. Would you like to take that? Uh, yes, thank you. So. Um, generally, when we talk about uh, the grant funding, we're talking about UK government grant funding, just you know, to, to clarify that. Um, and I appreciate the, the to take the destination charging regarding Gower. We do, as I said earlier, we have some coastal car park charging infrastructure, which will hopefully uh, deal with that and uh, obviously ease people's range anxieties, uh, because obviously, you know, it's quite a journey to some of our coastal car parks. Uh, in terms of Calais specifically, um, but talking as well generally about the land that we don't own, um, it's much easier in terms of li liabilities, planning and licensing if we use council owned land in terms of retaining the control and maintaining the public access. So because we've had, albeit some 
good successes in terms of grant funding. It's not um, unlimited funding, so we've had to concentrate it on areas. And what we've done is we've concentrated it on council-owned areas. We do fall into difficulties if we are starting to, as an example, lease spaces in a private car park. We're at the mercy then of the provider that they could inflate our lease costs. So if it's a council car park, we retain complete control and that's why we've concentrated on those. I understand Councillor Jones's questions around Calais and don't disagree that the private car park is in an ideal location, but because we don't own the land, it does it's fraught with difficulties for us as a local authority. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Bridget? can I just, oh, sorry, yeah, can yes. I, yeah, I um, with the destination car parks, um, because I'm talking about the Gower Road corridor, not the Mumbles Road corridor, the uh, nearest uh, destination car park is Port Hynan. So if you've come quite a way or you've got to go round into Gowerton, which I know I've got a question about that, unless you stop off in the city centre. But people coming along Gower Road don't tend to come that way. They would turn off and not go along past those car parks. So there's a huge gap in provision um, until you get to Port Island. and if it was on the other side of the road, there wouldn't be that gap. It would be, you know, a better place. And I have had this conversation with you when, when we um, had a, a meeting previously. Um, I think there's better spaces on the other side of the road going west towards uh, Gower rather than doing the parking bays outside the shops. Mary, I think they've got an answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Gower's a, a good example of where we've provided some uh, charge points in destinations like Port Aignan. Um And now we've got private sector installing charge points in the car park in Kettle. Um, so that, that, that that's really positive where we've where we've that's something. almost been you know, enabled people to take EVs to Gower and the private sector have now started jumping on board and thinking, you know what, we can there, there's a market here and it's a benefit to everyone. Mm, yeah. Right. OK, um, uh, Bridget, you've got a question. You're on mute, Bridget. Sorry, um, I think possibly uh, uh, my question is answered previously with what uh, Councillor Keaton asked, but um, you know, further on to her question about identifying community centres and churches, um, you know, would it would it be worth uh, the council doing a piece of work on contacting um, public buildings, churches, that kind of thing, to see whether anybody is interested, and and maybe there are some. Um, uh, organizations then that will have the match funding for that and you know because a lot of these uh, community centers um they've got a large car parking area and uh, a lot of them aren't used in the evenings so you know the, the the actual location is is quite good for that but i just wondered whether the, the council could investigate that Thank you, Bridget. Yeah, sort of start the discussion off, start a survey or something. Yeah. Take that. Yeah, happy to consider that. Thank you. OK, uh, Chris, you're up again. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it kind of just follows on from from yours and um, Councillor Rowland's uh, questions. Um, it, it might be cheaper for those organisations if they're being used overnight. Um, to install the slow charges rather than the, the rapid charges, um, which use sort of less electricity, um, might be sort of cheaper to, to install and to use as well, um, especially if they're a sort of local hub uh, where people could just park overnight and then walk home from there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. If I can come in on the first uh points on the question and then bring Matt in uh, to follow up. Um, so the first phases of grant funding that we've had, we specifically targeted the more rapid charging in terms of 
perhaps taking around two hours dwell time. And that was intentional because the charging infrastructure near the shops specifically was due to encourage people to use the shops, spend a little bit of money, uh, sort of um, dwell in that area. Uh, and so it didn't lend itself to the slow charging or the really fast charging. We sort of went in the middle. Um, but I, I take Councillor Evans' point that if you've got council car parks where people are parked overnight, then slow charging could be an option. But I'll bring Matt in regarding the technicalities of it all. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's, it's it's an interesting point and um, and something which we will look into to identify a need for this kind of overnight parking for well whoever might want it. We are looking to bid for another hub this year. So as, as the council said, we've got one going into Oxford Street, which has got a mixture of um, rapid and fast charging associated with it and some solar canopies to balance loads and, and that kind of thing. Um, technology is moving on very, very quickly in the EV sector and we, we're not we're not a million miles away from the first thousand mile battery and you know charge times of 10 minutes, which, which all of a sudden you're into sort of petrol station levels of um, convenience. Yes, thank you. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we are we we are keeping a, a watching brief on what's going on in the industry and and, and what's the the best fit for for Swansea. Thank you. Uh, right. Still. Three. Right, Mary, you you've got another question. Yeah, I'm looking to see if I could combine any, but I'm really sorry about this. Uh, they don't seem to be. Uh, they're all different subjects. Um, when you look at the um the little uh, figure on 2.4 where it says about all our uh, charging hubs uh, I just wondered do we monitor the usage of these um, points and is there any way we can find out where um, I, I've used Gowerton as an example in my question but it could be any of the car parks you know I want to know like how many people actually do take up uh, this and are they cost effective I suppose I'm asking. Okay. Matt, would you like to answer that? Uh, yeah, we do. We monitor all of the all of our charge points in the car parks. We can see um, things like the, you know, the number of people who have used them. We can see the total consumption, that kind of thing. Gowerton um, was, was the one that you raised, Councillor, and 3,300 kilowatts in 2021. Dropped off a cliff in 2022 because of the price of energy. That's when energy went through the roof and all of a sudden it became uncompetitive. Um, it is recovering now as energy prices are dropping. And we are in discussions with our suppliers as to what they're going to set the this year's rate to. Um, and it should see us being much more competitive with the private sector. Thank you. Uh, Mary again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm. I'm... <laughs> Or you want Can to I ask the last question because I, I got to work it out. You know, I'm a bit slow. Um, so you're saying that, and I'm, as I said, I only use Gowerton because it's obviously the nearest one that I could think of to me. Um, and you say that it dropped off. So you're saying that there was hardly any usage then because of the cost of um, the, the tariff, and yet some people would have had to, you know, charge their cars somewhere. Did it actually then put a load somewhere else? Because, you know, I don't understand if they were using it beforehand, they still needed to use it. So I'm sorry, Matt, I don't know if you can answer the question or can you see what I'm getting at? All of a sudden you've got so many kilowatt hours and all of a sudden you haven't got any. Where have those cars gone in between? Um, absolutely. It's, um, as I said, dropped off a cliff. It's a, it's a significant reduction in, in demand rather than people were still charging there, but but not as many. I mean, it's 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 very similar to, say, 2008 when petrol prices went through the roof and noticeably with my, my other hat on looking at traffic lights, car usage on the whole dropped significantly to the point where we had like a fraction of the number of cars on the road as we had before the petrol prices went up. So people will decide, they will choose how they travel based on based on cost, certainly. Thank you. Will, do you want to come in on this? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, my question really is around, obviously, when we draw electricity for vehicles um, and charge cars, obviously that comes from the grid. And uh, this is a much larger question, so, uh, you know, please bear with me. Um, but obviously where that electricity comes from isn't always uh, a green source. And we want to make sure that, you know, we are actually um 
doing our thing, uh, doing our thing for the reduction of carbon in the atmosphere. Now, I just wonder if the council has looked into or has a plan or looks in any way at generating and storing electricity on these sites or future sites um, to, you know, reduce carbon, for example, pulling from the grid and storing in uh, off peak times or generating um, power via solar or wind at a site and storing it there. Um, appreciate that storage is expensive and hard, but um, just wonder if that's been thought about, applied for, or if there's any plans to do that. Thanks. Thanks, Will. Andrea? Yeah. Andrea. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you to Councillor Thomas for the question. Um, I'm pleased to say that our current electric vehicle charging infrastructure is 100% renewable energy. Um, so hopefully that gives a bit of comfort. But in terms of generating on site, I'll bring Matt uh, in to talk about the hub. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we are currently in the process of installing our first rapid charge hub in Oxford Street car park. Um, that's going to be a mixture of rapid chargers and fast chargers supplemented with a, uh, a PV canopy, which has got solar panels on it and battery storage. Now that's twofold, really. Either the batteries will, can fill up if there's nobody charging, and then when PMB plugs in, you can charge from the batteries, or it also performs sort of load balancing, um, which will assist people using the, the faster end of the chargers, receiving the, the maximum charge rate they can. They can. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, okay. Thanks. Well. Could, could I, I follow? Yeah. Could I follow up with that, Chair? I just wonder what the anticipation of. Um, how much those solar panels will feed in? Um, what percentage of uh, uh, of the of the uh, expected demand the solar panels will generate? Because I'm, I'm guessing, obviously, it'd be a quite low percentage. It's better than nothing. Don't get me wrong at all. But I'm just wondering what uh, percentage, roughly, you're, you're anticipating that that will um, contribute to those charging um, points. And also, when we say our energy is 100% green, we obviously pay more for it to say that but it's not necessarily 100 percent green um where we get it from is it you know it's a bit more complex than that uh, behind the scenes i just wanted to point that out thanks 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 will uh, do you want to take that yeah how much the solar panels can supply depends entirely on how fast you're charging i mean uh, if for a, a set size of, of solar panel the faster that you're charging See that as a percentage, the less they're going to be able to supply down the slower end. You could charge a car entirely off off PV, but at the faster end, that's going to that's going to take energy off the grid as well. But so the PV does perform a very useful function in balancing out the balancing the load. Uh, can I follow up with that, um, if you don't mind? Uh, you were saying though that batteries are getting better and more powerful. It's going to work the same with actually storage on you know on these places, so it will get better. Right, thanks. Mary, you're up again. <laughs> now then, I hope I got this right because I seem to recall an email, but if I got it wrong, I'm sure you're all going to tell me. Um, I understand that there are EV charging points in the Undercroft uh, at Guildhall, which obviously only make it accessible in uh, staff hours, for want of a better terminology. And obviously, councillors would have been able to use it. And I haven't been down there for a while. Um, but I wanted to know, are we thinking of putting any on the rotunda, uh, especially then perhaps uh, residents could uh, use them at night, you know, if there was a way that the, they could be, you know, made that they, whatever they do, put a card in. I don't know. Sorry, I haven't got an electric car, so I'm not certain. Thanks, Mary. Andrea wants to answer. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, and I won't elaborate too much because I know there's another question which is related to this one um, that is coming up next. But uh, just to uh, reassure Councillor Jones that the sustainable transport strategy is looking at this uh, in terms of customer and staff accessible public EV charging infrastructure at our sites. So um, it is being considered and hopefully there will be more good news to follow on that. Not sure what the time scale is for it, but it's something that we're very keen on doing to help promote again. Thank you. Yeah, this is my next question and this is something I absolutely took from the meeting recently. Uh, I love the idea of people being able to go into work and charge their, their cars so that they didn't have the concern when they went home of wondering where they were going to charge privately. 
Um, I take it that this is part of this, the answer. Yeah, OK. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you, Chair. If I can elaborate on that. So uh, currently the, the charge and infrastructure that Councillor Jones was referring to in the courtyard of the Guildhall is specifically for our fleet. So our fleet vehicles can charge using that infrastructure, but only our fleet at this current time. So what uh, Mark Barrow and the team are looking at is a software package which will allow a member of staff with a card to use the electric vehicle charging infrastructure when it's available and charge, uh, sorry, and, and pay for the electricity that they use using the card. So we are exploring that software at the moment, and that wouldn't just be on the Guildhall site, but also, of course, sites like Gila Gorse and where we've got other charging infrastructure, um, potentially the Civic Centre, but you know, we're looking at council sites so that staff can access that. Uh, I think what we need to be mindful of is that when people are charged, they do then immediately need to move their car. So that is something that we need to consider as one of the challenges going forward. But we're definitely keen on encouraging our, our staff to take up EVs. Uh, and that's part of that puzzle. Thank you. Uh, Mary? Yeah, you've got one again. <laughs> yeah, but it's but partly it's been answered. It was just to point out, really, that it's not just terraced houses that get a problem to have a charging point. I mean, you have small blocks of flats that have their own parking, not um, underground car. I'm thinking in the marina, there's lots of underground uh, uh, parking. But if you've got, uh, say, um, two-storey flats and they... Um, can't charge so it's just a flag up really it's not about just terraced properties there are a lot of other different types of properties that it would be difficult to um, access to run uh, an electric vehicle my own house is included in that hence the question my meter is very very long distance from my drive and by the time we'd pay to have all the cabling done we wouldn't be getting much return for our electric for quite a while. So it was just flagging it up, really, not really an answer for a question. Thanks, Mary. So you, you don't want, you don't need an answer. That was just just, just pointing it out. OK. Um, Bridget? Unless, some, unless somebody yeah. wanted to make a comment. Sorry, Sarah. Dead, oh, Andrea wants to take. Yeah, thank you, Chair. We can comment on it. So um, vehicle and charge point manufacturers are able to offer homeowners advice on home charging, as well as organisations like the Energy Savings Trust. In terms of the council estates where we might have tower blocks or we may have communal areas of parking, um, this is something that's part of the uh, HRA strategy where, it, where possible, we might look to put electric vehicle charging infrastructure in those communal areas, which will hopefully assist people living in tower blocks, people living in medium to high rise, or people who don't have a dedicated driveway. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm sorry, I've got one more question which immediately follows about the other uh, sources of energy. Go for it, Mary. Sorry, I've said it. Oh, you know, are, are, you, are you aware of other sources of energy that are actually being looked at to run vehicles in the future? Because we're paying, you know, to put all this infrastructure in. But are we aware that we know we hydrogen's been talked about? Do we actually know how far down the road it is, or something else that they might come up with? Yeah, it's quite a juicy one. That who wants to Matt wants to take that one. Yeah, it's a it's a very good question, and and, and it's very similar to the next question as well. And that we don't know. I mean, the, we're involved at the minute in sort of hydrogen bus pilots, looking at hydrogen power for for public service vehicles, that kind of thing. Um, but clearly, there are there's a lot of research going on into into synthetic fuels and and other sources of sort of low carbon fuel that could possibly power a vehicle. Um, I mean, it, it does pose difficulties for us as an authority in, in sort of in, in which way we, which way we jump quite. But um, but we uh, we do watch with interest as to how it's developing. Uh, thank you, uh, Bridget. You've got the last question. To be honest with you, I think it was probably answered in in that answer there. So um, 
unless uh, they've got sight of the question, unless they've got something else to add to it. But I don't I don't think there is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Never, never, never uh, fail. <laughs> yeah. Answer um, after it's got an answer. Yeah. I'm grateful for the question. And, um, you know, it's a fair question. What does the future look like, essentially, in terms of low uh, or zero carbon emission vehicles? Um, as Matt has hinted at, you know, we will look to see what technologies are coming forward and adapt accordingly. Um, I think there will be an interim period where we will see hydrogen and electric, but the technologies are advancing in terms of battery storage at a rate of knots and also the uh, types of materials used for batteries are improving. We're moving away from lithium for an, as an example towards cleaner, uh, more sustainable uh, battery storage. But the hydrogen vehicles at this moment in time um, are potentially they're unaffordable. Um, but then we saw electric vehicles were very unaffordable in the beginning and costs are starting to come down um, with the economies of scale. So as a council, we keep an eye on the technologies which are advancing uh, and we'll keep adapting accordingly. Um, but we can only cut our cloth at the moment to what's available. Um, but I, I hope that we'll see significant advancements in this uh, manufacturing industry. Um, I, I don't want to get too political today, but it's just a shame with the announcement to Tata that we had opportunities there, you know, across Wales for car manufacturing and being involved in that space. Uh, and so I hope that that decision is reconsidered um, because I know that Tata Steel are working really closely with the universities in terms of innovation and technologies. Uh, and it's the, the R&D element that is critical here in terms of advancements in this particular field. Um, so we'll watch very closely and we'll adapt accordingly. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Could, could I add to that? Um, will there ever be a chance, and well, I'm hoping there will be, of recycling the back car batteries in Swansea or around Swansea? I know there there's one in Cornwall, I think, that's doing them as successfully. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Again, we'll watch closely what others are doing and, and if they're leading by example and sharing good practice, we'll follow that. I have been aware of batteries being reused. My understanding is when a car battery comes to around 80% capacity, it's no longer considered useful, but there could be other uses. For example, we might be able to convert it as a home battery for storage for solar panels. So I think it is something that we could work with the universities on and keep a close eye on the emerging technologies rather than sending it to landfill. Surely there's a better use than that uh, because it doesn't reach end of life just because it's only uh, recharging at 80 percent. Um, I think the one in Cornwall, they take the minerals out, the, the any use useful stuff like that. Um, recycle them. Thank you. Michael. So we can't hear anything. That is, is entirely my fault for not turning the microphone on. OK, uh, the, the, the firm in China, the, the uh, electric car manufacturer in China, BYD, is um, bringing out cars where the battery, instead of using lithium, is using sodium. And sodium will, ha will have the advantage that it's cheaper and sodium will have the advantage that you can charge it faster. But the disadvantage is that the range will be less. And I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, uh, Chris, do you want to come in there? Um, yeah, so just going back to what um, Council Lewis was uh, saying regarding repurposing EV batteries for home usage, uh, there's actually a company in Philately that, uh, that does that. Thank you. Should we get on to item seven? Is, oh, are there any more questions, first of all? Wendy, do you want to add anything? No? Yeah. No, thank you. I've listened to everything intently, and I think lots of questions have been answered. 
Okay, thank you. Oh, yes, Andrea. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I could just make a, a quick comment, can I just thank the panel? Um, it's really great to see such enthusiasm and interest in a subject which, as they know, is very close to my heart. Um, and it's been really useful today. I hope the panel have found it useful. But we do welcome this keen interest in this particular subject. Um, and, and we look for ways to help promote this uh, as far and wide as we possibly can. And I hope that members will help us with that engagement with the public in their communities. But thank you so much for inviting us today. Thank you for being so enthusiastic as well <laughs> and answering all the questions. Thank you. Gosh, sorry. Item seven, work programme 23-24, any comments? No? Right, the next meeting is on the 19th of March at 10 a.m. The items to be discussed, I'm really excited about this, local flood risk management, the annual updating, including, wait for it, Mary, uh, discussions on drainage systems and services, which is dear to our hearts and Wendy's and Wendy's complained about it before as well and air quality management so I'm looking forward to the pre-meeting there because I bet we'll have sheets and sheets of questions <laughs> um right uh thank you for all joining I think they actually appreciated all our questions Liz do you want to stop recording thank you well, thank you chair yes it was a very interesting